Good evening, everyone. My name is Marcus Campbell, President of the Medicine Hat District Chamber of Commerce, also representing Toronto and AirTech. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to be here tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to our American friends that may be celebrating. Hopefully you got the football game on in the background, but please pay attention to what's going on tonight. Um, thanks for all attending tonight's President's Reception, Membership Appreciation, and our AGM. Before we begin, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to recognize tonight's technical sponsor, Apex Alberta. With their support, we have been able to connect through Remo, the platform that we're using tonight, and deliver our event in a more interactive way. Now we'll hear a few words from Tracy Stroud, the Regional Innovation Network Coordinator with Apex Alberta. Apex Alberta is proud to be the tech sponsor for the Medicine Hat and District's Chamber of Commerce 2021 President's Reception, Membership Appreciation and AGM. For us at Apex, we have been thankful to work with the Chamber over this past year, collaborating on different events and projects such as the Community Innovation Connector that we are excited to launch in January 2022. In partnership with the Medicine Hat College, Community Futures, Alberta Innovates, Defence Research Development Canada, City of Medicine Hat and the Chamber, we have been developing the Connector to be a place where community members representing business, academia, government and the technology startup community can work together to foster innovation and ignite new technology products, services and companies. Ultimately, this project will connect innovative businesses and inventors to resources, ensuring that they have the supports to start their idea and grow their companies. And we can't wait to show you more. This is just one example how we are working together to spark businesses that are the change makers, the inventors, and the trailblazers. And collaboration is important to us. This past year, the Apex Governance Partners, Community Futures Entrecorp, Medicine Hat College, and Alberta Innovates celebrated over 10 years of working together. We also celebrated new developments from the partners such as Alberta Innovates announcing four new business tech accelerators to help more companies scale up their businesses. And then our partner, Medicine Hat College, creating new training programs for the tech for workforce of tomorrow. For example, the Sustainable Innovation Program that is all about considering the social, environmental and economic impacts on decisions made in business for long-term success. And then our partner, Community Futures Entrecorp, announced new programs to retain and expand businesses in Southeast Alberta, such as the Digital Service Squads in partnership with BusinessLink that will support more companies needing to reach new markets online. And finally, we celebrated the launch of Women Innovators Southeast, our WISE initiative that is focused on getting more women into entrepreneurship and careers in the science, technology, engineering, and math fields. But we know that we don't have to tell the Chamber that there is much more work to be done. This past year has been incredibly challenging for businesses. For us at Apex, we believe the way forward is through collaboration. By moving forward together, we can make the best use of the assets we have. We look forward to continuing to work with our local Chamber to do just that. From all of us at Apex, thank you to your Chamber membership, the Chamber team, and the Chamber board for your leadership. We hope you enjoyed tonight's appreciation and networking event, and we look forward to ongoing collaborations. For more information, please connect with us at apexalberta.ca. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy and John and the entire Apex team. Appreciate that message. Uh, before we get moving on here, an opportunity to say uh, thanks to our dignitaries and special guests in attendance tonight. Uh, Her Worship, Mayor Lindsay Clark, City of Medicine Hat Councillors, Allison Canodal, Cassie Hyder, and Darren Hirsch, City of Medicine Hat CAO, Bob Nicolay, Alberta Chamber of Commerce, Second Vice Chair and Past President of our local chamber, Aaron Fleming, and our exclusive Chambers Group Insurance Plan Advisor, Joanne Lechtman, who always makes the best videos for all of our events. I'd also like to recognize our 2020-21 Board of Directors, uh, Scott Lair, Shortgrass Ranches, First Vice President Trevor Anhel, RBC Mobile Mortgage Specialist, Second Vice, 
Brad Pudwell, EBT Chartered Accountants, our treasurer, Tracy Newlett with MNP, past president, Sarah Coach, Bishop, Bishop Coach Lawyers Director, Reagan Weeks, Prairie Rose School Division and Southern Alberta Hockey Academy Director, Sarah Franchetto, RBC Financial Director, Stephen Hyde, Lacey Holmes, a director, Steve Pudwell with Patterson Media, also a director, and last but not least, Mark Keller with Medicine Act College and Les Scholey with Pritchard & Company, both directors. Thank you to each of our directors for the commitment and time over the past year. Uh, your dedication to this organization is, is truly valuable. As you know that we have been making motions, through, we will be making motions throughout the night and we'll need movers and shakers or seconders from the chamber board. Uh, in the chat function in the Q&A, uh, as a poll for the motions that need to be carried, you will be able to upvote the option of in favor or opposed for each motion. Please use the chat function to submit any questions you may have along the way. And now we're posting the that option. Excellent. So at this time, what time is it? 5.39, I'd like to call to order the meeting at 5.39 p.m. And looking for confirmation of quorum, as per our bylaws, the requirement for quorum is 11 member, member businesses. Mr. Lair, do we have quorum? Thank you, sir. Uh, with our registration list and attendees, we are able to confirm quorum. Uh, looking for the adoption of the agenda. So you'll see as part of your presentation, the meeting, the AGM meeting package in the chat. I'll draw your attention to the AGM package that you received via email, and it's also been posted in the chat. So if you've got two seconds, take a chance and, and look at that. The agenda can be found on page one. Are there any additions or amendments to the agenda? None. Perfect. Looking for a motion on the floor. Um, hearing no additions or amendments, may I please have a mover and a seconder to put their name and company in the chat function to adopt the agenda for the 2021 AGM meeting as presented. Good. Can you Tracy, MNP. <laughs> Tracy from MMP and Brad Podwell is a seconder. Thank you, folks. Uh, that motion is carried. Now, if you turn to page two, you'll find the minutes from last year's AGM and from our general meeting on Thursday, November 19th, 2020. Are there any amendments to the minutes? Hearing none. We will ask for a motion to have a mover and a shaker or a seconder, put their name and their company in the chat function to accept the minutes for the November 20 AGM as presented. Stephen Pudwell and Ryan Dorton. Thank you, gentlemen. That motion is carried. Uh, and now we're going to move into our year in review. Um, so uh, as, as a governing board, it's our role to set the direction of the chamber using the pillars of connection, support, and influence, our strategic plan, goals, and objects, objectives. These help us plant the seeds for the future. We set a new vision in January of 2021, and we are looking forward to see what our operations team will build for the future of our organization and our membership moving forward as we continue to cultivate activities and ideas and implementing our strategic plans for the organization. So it's been a little bit of a tough year for everybody and I think that's that's no secret. We've had uh, a, a wonderful team turnover uh, with, within our chamber and uh, we'd like to thank that new, new team for their ongoing commitment and uh, the commitment of our executive director 
Lots of hardship this year. And uh, as a board and as a chamber, I think we've done a really good job of, of trying to focus on the solution rather than sitting in the problem. And I know it's been a trying year for a lot of people. So, you know, that remained optimism. From my standpoint, I feel like I kind of got shortchanged a little bit because for, for those of you that know me, I like to be out in the public and chatting with people and everything we had to do this year was was virtual. Um, my first meeting this year was in person and then my last meeting with the board was in person. The rest of them were all virtual. But that's that's the way things roll and uh, we've done a great job of, of continuing to be supportive. Um, a couple of highlights for us. Um, we remained creative in finding value in the membership. So we brought on a, a ton of complimentary men memberships in a time of need where the business community needed that support. Uh, really impressed with what we did up with that. Uh, we wanted to be that helping hand for the non-member that, that maybe wasn't up to speed with what the off what the chamber offered. Um, we were still able to conduct a strategic plan, which we used a, a really wonderful platform, uh, the Miro board. So Lisa and the team did a wonderful uh, job of, of getting together and building out their vision. And then the board, we did a, a two days of, of intensive online stuff, and it was a really unique way to do things and still accomplish those goals. We moved almost all of the events to virtual and transitioned into new regulatory requirements. We continued to push communication and information for our members. We ensured that we were advocating and working with every level of government. And then uh, the, the things that we struggled with and we failed at. You know, during COVID, uh, it was difficult to govern in the in-person component. So it may have felt like us as a chamber, we're at a little bit of an arm's length distance, but we're really optimistic of, of what is to come. Um, and getting back to that sense of normal. And, and I think we can see it in the community. There's a, there's a sense of optimism as we move into Christmas. So um, congratulations to all of those businesses that have, have done their best to remain optimistic. And uh, if there's anything you, you need from us as a chamber, feel free to reach out to us. And with that, we're going to tra transfer it over to Lisa. Thank you, Marcus. There's been a number of initiatives that we've implemented over the course of the last year from our advocacy and membership, community partnerships and events, our communications and our response to COVID, as well as looking at our legacy as we build the path to the future. When we talk specifically about advocacy, it's really about planting the seeds. There are seeds of ideas, concerns, and opportunities within our business community. When issues, processes, and legislation need improving, we take the time to carefully weed out those concerns and cultivate ideas and opportunities for growth. COVID-19 was an impactful year, and many policies and regulations were rapidly adjusting time and again. Being the internal liaison for our business community allowed us to voice their, their concerns during this really critical time. We were able to gather information and find solutions to the many challenges and we took that to heart and were able to make the change that this is. We hosted a number of great events that gave members the opportunity to understand and further develop their thoughts on issues and cultivate seeds of their own in the many connections and discussions they had. Our commitment to help and voice solutions and recommendations to government conversations on behalf of our business is a step forward to continuing to fuel our business. On our website, you'll be able to see the number of policies that we have on our books, and you can see that they're municipal, provincial, and federal in nature. We do work at every level of government to ensure your voice is heard. We've had a number of government meetings and a number of emails and letters that we've sent. We've also been able to invest over 1,500 hours in advocacy efforts specifically for you. Our policy wins means that we're able to see the recommendations that we make on your behalf come to fruition. We can actually see meaningful change that makes an impact for business and to your bottom line. We have a number of influencer members within our membership. And if you're interested in what that actually means, we encourage you to give us a call at the office 
from his book online. In addition to the advocacy through meetings and correspondence, we also host a number of events. And those include our State of the City Address. We had a meet and greet with Minister Teams, as well as Minister Tanya Park. Um, we hosted a leadership luncheon, as well as an economic recovery round table. If you want to learn more about the advocacy work that we do, you can certainly go onto our website at www.hatchy.com, or you're always welcome to give us a call. I'm now going to talk it over to Selena Simmons, our member of relations manager. Thank you. Be quiet the seat, fertilize the soil, water the root, and allow business to grow and thrive. We are here to serve the needs of every business in our region and to help them prosper. We want each and every member to feel like they are our priority. We invest time and resources to ensure we can help businesses meet the specific need they have. Grand openings, events, advocacy, promotion, and community partnerships are the many ways that we cultivate those relationships with our members and celebrate their successes, giving a helping hand whenever needed. We value our members, as without them, we wouldn't be here. When fueling our business community, we value each and every member, so each investment brings a positive outcome for businesses and our community to help us grow and thrive. This year, our membership statistics include 85 stable starters, 424 stabilizers, 16 connectors, 11 influencers, 22 promoters, and 29 community builders. We also have 221 other membership levels. Our team is committed to growing our benefit offerings and connecting with our members to continually show value in membership. If you're interested in knowing more about our membership opportunities, please feel free to contact me at membership at medicinehatchamber.com. I'll now turn it over to Ian Lutton, our industry support and government relations coordinator, who will share our efforts regarding our community partners. Thanks, Selena. I'd like to talk about a few of the initiatives that the Chamber of Health has One of the most major is uh, Shop YSH. We help create long term sustainability and competitiveness for local businesses by encouraging them to join us on a platform called Shop YSH, wherein it allows local businesses to become e commerce integrated and local shoppers to more easily find ways to spend their money in a way that supports their local economy. Our partnership with the Bow Island Chamber also allowed us to introduce new initiatives tailored to the needs of rural communities in southern Alberta. This included making an updated set of records created through Chamber Connections, which allow businesses in Bow Island to be more easily findable online, directly driving local dollars to stay in the community. In the near future, our partnership will further the development of more projects, including campaigning for chamber awareness, adding more substantive value for Bo Island and other rural chamber members, and advocating for the interests of businesses in Bo Island. We also have put a lot of hours and effort into the work integrated learning program. The chamber has continued supporting jobs in the community, especially through the promotion and expansion of work integrated learning programs for students and employers. 40 local employers have signed up to train and educate the next generation of employees. Talent in Medicine Hat is being retained and attracted by the Chamber, with 18 students having found meaningful roles with local businesses through our support for work integrated learning. These students are going to continue to build their skills and their talents through the training provided by these uh, programs. Now I'd like to pass this on to our wonderful events coordinator, Kristen Walsh. Thank you. Thanks, Kian. Um, we can talk about our events now for the last year here. Um, the last year was a learning curve for most, whether it was struggling to get into a meeting because you got the wrong Zoom call or searching for the unmute button to express your thoughts. Many of us can relate to some of those troubles and tech issues that virtual events and meetings bring us. In this past year, we at the Chamber learned how to cultivate those troubles and grow from them. We hosted many successful virtual events, such as our Lunch and Learns, political events, our business awards, leadership luncheon, president's reception, state of the city, and some training sessions along the way. This is all in addition to a number of grand openings and grand reopenings as well. These events allowed us to replant from our roots to develop a new way of connecting from connecting with one another. We are excited to develop and sprout as we share events that will continue fueling our business community. 
we were able to, as a chamber team, and of course, with the generous support of our sponsors, we were able to welcome over a thousand attendees to 13 different online events. Um, some of the big ones were our social media conference uh, hosted this past June from June 8th to the 29th. Um, we welcomed Joe's social media, Evoke Inspired Marketing, Invest Medicine Hat, and uh, David Pat from Digital Trends and Cybersecurity Tips as our main speakers for our four webinars where we were able to welcome um, 100 attendees to those ones. So it's very successful. Um, this is all in partnership with the Medicine Hat College, Community Futures Entrecorp, Apex Alberta and Alberta Innovates. Um, we were actually able to also host our business awards event on October 16th of 2020. Um, this was driving business forward. You can look at our annual report um, and our business awards page to check out those award winners um, through all those categories that we had along with some celebration photos along the way. Um, of course, we weren't able to host this type of event without the support of our sponsors um, in 2020. Um, so we were very grateful for their for their support for sure. And um, you can check out the Chamber's YouTube page um, to take a look at the 2020 Business Awards highlight video. And the 2021 one uh, will be up there in the next little while. Um, so because this is my last event as the Marketing and Special Events Manager, I'm actually going to pass this on to Samantha Tonin, who is coming into that, coming into that role. Thanks, Lewin. Thanks, Kristen. Coming in into this role of the Marketing and Special Events Manager, I can take for certain that the last year was challenging and the idea of my experience. Although there were many cancellations and changes, we were able to accommodate and go and collaborate with a new event for the opportunity. I could perform an instrumental while adapting to these changes. Unfortunately, we had to cancel the spring trade show for 2018. Although there have been many changes necessary efforts in the direction we are headed with events and virtual platforms, it's benefit the chamber as we evolve and create innovative experiences with I'm currently planning the 2022 Spring Trade Show, which is March 4th and 6th, 2022. The planning for this upcoming trade show involves a much needed rebrand in order to focus on bringing in a new demographic. I'm fortunate to have such a great team to great with so that we can conduct proper research, come up with new ideas, and reach out to exhibitors who previously have not been part of the show. <laughs> in past years, Amber has had two trade shows, one in the spring and one in the fall. Going forward, we have decided to discontinue the fall trade show to focus more on the success of the trade show and other potential events within the With that being said, we were able to be a part of a planning committee for the 2021 Downtown Midnight Mass. This was a great opportunity for the chamber to engage in downtown businesses and to create relationships going forward that also come up. As you may or may not know, the chamber was able to organize our own event for Midnight Madness, which was attending to outside of our building sponsored by the This was a great way to encourage families to come down and participate in all of the events going on while also promoting that type of the community building. Events such as Midnight Madness is only one example of the additional events we would be a part of moving forward. Being part of these events does not only benefit the event itself, but creates exposure to the chamber, which allows them to grow our membership database and create additional community connecting. I will now pass it over to Josh Shaker, our presentation and comments administrator. Thanks, Samantha. COVID-19 has pushed the digital era to a new level and communication strategy is more critical than ever. The online market is being flooded and brand differentiation is extremely important during this time. We are committed to providing a strong brand image that represents our organization as well as the business community. Focus on creating a building block that furthers our brand as well as connects us with invested members that want to continue to grow our channels and plant the seed. Our goal is to gain more engagement, in turn creating new members with effective and efficient communication. By being a hub of information to and between members, we are committed to feeling our business community. Last year, we had 2,093 Facebook page likes, 1,052 Instagram followers, 1,230 LinkedIn followers, and just over 3,500 voice subscribers. Our Facebook page reached over 44,000 users. Our web page also had over 134,000 views. Our voice, we 
actually integrated it into our website to drive traffic to our website and also make our blog posts more easily accessible for members to get the information that we need out to them. Um, with COVID-19, it's been crazy and with the overload of information, it's been a huge asset to, um, to our members and to our community. Furthermore, I'll pass off to Rebecca Wheeler where she will talk about COVID-19 and her economic impact. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. COVID-19 is like a forest fire. There is great life before trees are thick and green. Businesses are doing well and thriving. Then comes, then a fire comes through. Some still have growth and some turn to ash. Our efforts through COVID-19 were to ensure as many businesses came out with regrowth in the sight of green within a bunch of gray. We conducted an economic impacts report to get a better understanding of how businesses were affected. We then implemented supports such as being an info source, advocating for policy, providing cost savings on membership, and implementing programs such as ShopYXH to get products to consumers. As things continue to change in such uncertain times, we are dedicated to using our connections, support, and influence to keep fueling the business community. We contacted 502 businesses for this report in 13 organization types and spent a total of 652 hours researching along with 230 hours of writing. Thank you, Rebecca. Our tree at the chamber has been built up for more than 120 years. It has strong roots from many presidents, boards and business members of the past. And we are all proud to be branches of this tree and continue into the next year to watch how we will grow together. We invite you to come and visit us at the Chamber, give us a call or visit us online. We're here to help you grow. And I'll now pass you back to Marcus. And we're back. Sorry, I got a local cookie in my mouth. Um, so now we're going to move to... Uh, the recognition of our new members as I dribble cookie all over my, my face. Now, if you turn to page five of the AGM package, you'll see a list of our new members for the 2021 fiscal year. Even in the challenges of COVID, we still added 58 members. We still had 58 new members invest in the chamber this past year. Um, so, Looking for a motion from the floor to accept uh, the new members for 2021, 2020 as presented. That's quite a list. Stephen Pudwell from Patterson. And Trevor Ann Hell with RBC. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, this motion is carried now. At this time, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Brett, Pud Brett Pudwell, butchered that, board treasurer to present our financial report. Do you want a high five? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Thanks, Marcus. <clears throat> Thanks, Marcus. Um, the financial report can be found starting on page seven of the AGM package. As with many businesses, the chamber was no different in terms of the financial challenges impacted by COVID. With the inability to host our trade shows and events in person, we counted on our traditional revenue sources, such as memberships, sponsorships, and advertising, with other expenses offset by the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy, student grants, SEBA, SMERG, um, to help provide the chamber with a positive net income for the current year. I invite you to review the financials and I would welcome any questions. Um, hearing no questions, as treasurer of the Manhattan District Chamber of Commerce, I propose the following motions. Can I please have a mover and a seconder to put their name in the company in the chat function to adopt the August 31st, 2021 financial statements as circulated? Mark Campbell. Um, please use the Q&A function as a poll. Good. That motion is carried. Can I please have a mover and a seconder put their name and company in the chat function to waive the requirement that the Medicine Hatton District Chamber of Commerce present audited financial statements 
in exchange for reviewed financial statements. Scott Lair, Marcus Campbell. <clears throat> that motion is carried. Can I please have a mover and a seconder put their name and company in the chat function to appoint the accounting firm of Johnson Morrison Hunter and Co. PC to perform the review of the Manhattan District Chamber of Commerce financial statements for the 2021 2022 fiscal year? Tracy Millet. Tracy Millet. Drive around now. The motion is carried. I'll now pass the meeting back to our president, Marcus Campbell. Good work, buddy. Well done, Brett. Thank you very much. So, chamber elections. Uh, under the Board of Trades Act, under which we are governed as a board, we are required to hold our elections for board of directors and our executive members at our annual general meeting. As such, I will now turn it over to our past president for 2021, chair of our leadership development committee, Tracy Newlett, and her wonderful earrings. Thanks, Marcus. Are you guys Perfect. <clears throat> Good evening. So if you turn to your page 22 of your AGM package, you'll find the slate of candidates we have put up for nominations this evening. Uh, they were, um, sorry, during the summer, we had uh, put out submissions for candidates for the board and there were two people that were nominated and there are also two people available or two spots available. So uh, we have Brandon Sancioni, and at Medicine Hat Nissan and Kirsten Speck at Couture Hair and Beauty. Hi there, I'm Brandon Sancioni, General Manager and Managing Partner at Medicine Hat Nissan. Why I chose to run for the Chamber Board elections was because I've previously been part of several boards, including being elected as a director with the Penticton Chamber of Commerce, and I found it a great opportunity to support and give back to our local community and local businesses. Uh, what I'm looking forward to in the role is uh, to support and network and educate and advocate for local businesses as well as being a part of the community. Um, being part of the chamber gives you a, a great opportunity to support and uh, network with local business owners. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of these uh, elections and I really look forward to uh, working together uh, collaboratively with you and supporting you. Thank you. My name is Kirsten Speck. I own Couture Hair here in Medicine Hat, Alberta. The reason I decided to run for the Board of Directors for the Chamber of Commerce is I enjoy giving back to my community and I figured what better way than to contribute my time to our local Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. I'm most looking forward to connecting with other uh, local business owners and being able to support the community through the Chamber. Thank you. These individuals will join our existing directors on the board who are serving another term in accordance with our policies. As such, I'm pleased to present the slate of candidates for the 2021-22 year for the director's positions off the chamber, as listed on page 22 of, the a of your AGM package. Your slate of candidates of directors are Scott Laird, Shortgrass Ranches, Trevor Anhill, RBC Mobile Mortgage Specialist, Brett Pudwell, EBT Chartered Professional Accountants, Sarah Franchetto, RBC Royal Bank, Regan Weeks, Prairie Rose School Division, Steve Hyde, Lacey Holmes, Stephen Pudwell, Patterson Media, Les Scholey, Pritchard & Co. LLP, Mark Keller, Medicine Hat College, Brandon Sangioni, Medicine Hat Nissan, and Kirsten Speck, Pritchard Hair & Beauty. As the Chamber goes through a rigorous nomination process, including in-depth questionnaires and nominees, with the nominees, we are confident in the slate that we've presented. However, in accordance with our bylaws, we are still required to ask if there are any nominations from the floor that wish to be considered. If you have any, please put them in the chat. Hearing none, can I please have a mover and a seconder put their name in the chat or speak up to elect the slate of candidates as presented for the 2021-22 term. Sure, Angel. and Brett Redbond. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Any discussion? That motion is carried. 
So we do have to do some more motions here because our executive is has to be individually elected. So get on your uh, your your keypads there. We need you guys to step up with your motions. So we would like to present our slate of candidates for the executive positions of the chamber for the 21-22 year. The slate includes Scott Lair for the position of president, Trevor Anhill for the position of first president, Steve Hyde for the position of second vice president, sorry, and Brett Pudwell for the position of treasurer. <clears throat> we have Scott Lair as our proposed president on the slate. Are there ne any nominations from the floor for the position of president? Be quick, because <laughs> I'm hearing none. Uh, can we please have a mover and a seconder put their name on the company in the chat function? Steve Pudwell and Ryan Gordon. Steve Pudwell and Ryan Gordon. Ryan Gordon. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Q&A function should pop up there. Motion is carried. Thank you. We have Trevor Ann Hill as their proposed first vice president on the slate. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, can I please have a mover and seconder for Trevor? Scott Lair. Brett and Brett Pumpel, thank you. And that one is carried. Thank you very much. We have Steve Hyde as our proposed second vice on the slate. Are there any nominations from the floor for the second position up for the position of second vice president? Hearing none. Can I please have a mover and seconder to put their, their name and company in the chat or speak up? Sarah Brentetto. Nice, thank you, Sarah. And a seconder? Trevor Angel, thank you. Q&A should pop up. Carried, thank you. We have Brett Pudwell proposed as our treasurer on the slate. Are there nominations from the floor? Hearing none, can I have a mover and a seconder for Brett? Trevor Angel. Trevor, thank you. Scott, Scott, Lair. Scott Lair, thank you very much. Any discussion? That is carried. <clears throat> At this time, we invite, just gonna double check my pages. Yep. At this time, we invite Her Worship, Mayor Lindsay Clark, to perform the oath of office for our executive. Hello. Uh, before starting the duties of their office, each officer shall take an oath. I will call upon Scott Lair, President of the Chamber, Trevor Anhill, First Vice President, Steve Haight, Second Vice President, and Brett Pudwell, Treasurer, to take the oath. Uh, this year, we will perform the ceremony as a group versus each person taking the oath individually. Uh, so you're gonna repeat after me. I swear. I swear. That I will faithfully and truly. That I will faithfully and truly. Perform my duty as an executive member of the chamber. Perform my duty as an executive member of the chamber. And that I will. That I will. I will in all matters connected with the discharge of that duty. In all matters connected with the discharge of that duty. Do all things and only such things. Do all things and only such things. As I truly and conscientiously believe. As I truly and conscientiously believe. To be adapted to promote the objectives for which this board was constituted. To be, to be adapted, adapted to promote the objects for which this board was constituted. According to the true intent and meaning of the same. According to the true intent and the meaning of the same. Congratulations. I look so forward to working with you and I'm sure uh, you have excellent things in store for us and uh, your community partners as well. So very much looking forward to seeing what you guys have to do. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, congratulations to all the newly elected uh, executive and directors. 
I just want to say this is technically my retirement. Uh, I was past president and this is the last time I get to speak. <laughs> so just a couple of words I'd like to say. Um, I have such a great deal of respect for anyone that has put their name up on this board and puts their time into this organization. It is a great organization. I think everybody on this on this webinar tonight would know that. It, we really do uh, commit to making our community better and, and I'm very proud of that. And I just want to say we have a diverse group around the table. We've had some, some fiery discussions in my terms and I've loved every minute of it. And I love that we all care about the chamber and yet we all have such great respect for each other that at the end of the day, we actually can you know leave together all as one team and it's so great. So again, thank you to everyone that was part of my term. Thank you to those of you that came before us. Thank you. Now with that, uh, I believe, Marcus, you are supposed to hand the ceremonial gavel oh. to uh, our, our president. So, oh, no. we have a... <laughs> we have a I'm just finding this out. <laughs> no, you're not. Well, I, didn't, like I haven't seen it. So, a little kind of a, a fun story about passing the gavel. We tried to film it um, a number of times and it didn't work out. Yeah. And... <clears throat> So I literally got to hold the gavel once this year and during that time. So this beauty has been with us for 12 years and I get to take that with me that I was the one that broke it. So we were able to stick it together. So in the video, I'm sure you'll see that we're handling it quite gently. But the, the photo evidence that we had to send to Lisa telling her that we broke the gavel was quite amusing. Um, so with that, uh, this today ends my term as president. And like I said, it was a little bit of a different opportunity, not what I fully expected, but I am happy to say that the team that I was part of did a wonderful job. I'm, I'm really excited for Scott coming in um, with the world kind of getting back to a sense of norm. Um, and so I, I just wanted to thank everybody that supported me during my term. And uh, I look forward to my role as past president. So as of now, it's it's your your baby, buddy. Thanks, Marcus. Should we put that in a box of favor for you? We should. I'm going to take that with me. Bury it. Bury it. Bury it, yes. <laughs> off just, to, off to Scott. Ground. Thanks, Marcus. And thank you, chamber members, uh, for putting your trust in me and giving me the opportunity to be your president this next year. Um, there's some big shoes to fill. But I'm confident that with the great board of directors we have backing me up and our amazing office team doing the great day-to-day -day work that they do, um, it will be a great year. Maybe even a nice, easy, smooth sailing one. No one has to have dreams anyways. One of the things I'm looking forward to the most the next year is attending and hosting in-person events that allow the networking and socialization that everyone looks forward to so much in chamber events. Few of my main goals in the next year will be to refocus um, the chamber on and tweak what we need to on our strap plan um, as needed to make sure it meets the needs of our membership in this new economic reality we're facing. I'd like to continue to strengthen our agricultural membership and policy work as well. Agriculture was a key part of the chamber's beginning uh, a long time ago, and it's still the backbone of our community today. One of the biggest things I like is to encourage regional collaboration at all levels, as it is vitally important to the prosperity of our city, towns, county, and everyone living in them. They are all very interconnected in our day-to-day -day lives as we move throughout the region from where we live to where we work, go to school, and most importantly, play. Um, this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Trevor Anhal, our first vice president, and he will be recognizing our member anniversaries. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> Thanks again, Scott. Looking forward to serving this year with yourself and the rest of the board and the entire chamber team for uh, all of our members. Uh, this is the part of the evening that we'd like to recognize all of our members that are celebrating membership milestones. The chamber continually works to expand services, opportunities and benefits for the local business community. And these initiatives wouldn't be possible without your participation as members. Today, we the board of directors along with the staff would like to formally say thank you. 
for your membership, your insight, and your support over the years. We have an impressive list of members celebrating milestones all the way from five years to 100 plus years tonight. This year, the Chamber of Commerce is honoring members who are celebrating their milestone anniversaries during the 2021-2022 year as active members of the Chamber. We are truly grateful of these companies who stood behind the Chamber for so many years and recognized their financial contribution, and most importantly, the longevity of their business. You'll see a slideshow to follow of the businesses who have already been provided their membership certificates and plaques leading up to this event. We'll start with the businesses that are celebrating their 10 year anniversary. Junior Achievement of Southern Alberta. New Rock Developments. Cypress Medicine Hat Constituency Office, MLA Drew Barnes. Medicine Hat Retirement Villa. Rona. Stringham LLP, Caddis Aviation Management Limited, iBuild Inc, Canadian Forces Space Suffield, Justscape, Deerview Meats, Elite Hair Group, Ocean Sales Group Limited, Nelson's Radiator and Air Conditioning Services Limited, Flight 5 Inc., Halo, Solid Rock Fencing Limited, Red Cliff Family Dental, and now we will move to the members who are celebrating, we're going to 20 years, days in, Medicine Hat, Bromley Mechanical Services, Badlands Harley-Davidson, R.W. Gibson Consulting Services, Comic Readers, Church Unlimited Christian Ministries, H&R Block, Four Seasons Sales Medicine Hat, City of Medicine Hat, Sophus and Moore, Bishop Cook Lawyers, Carriage House Hotel and Conference, Medicine Hat and District Health Foundation. And now we will move to the members celebrating 30 years of membership at the Chamber. Congratulations. Arts Excavating, Cottonwood Cooley Golf Course, Alberta Blue Cross, United Farmers of Alberta, EBT Chartered Accountants, Medicine Hat Women's Shelter, Culligan of Canada, HSBC Bank of Canada, Medicine Hat College, Scotia Wealth Management, and now for the members who are celebrating 40 years of membership with the Chamber of Commerce, RBC Dominion Securities. We'd also like to recognize the Chamber's longest standing members. These businesses have had continuous membership with the Chamber for more than 90 years. Honorable mentions are TD Canada Trust Downtown, 98 years. Bank of Montreal, 98 years. Royal Bank of Canada, 101 years. Medicine Hat News, 119 years. Thank you to each one of you for your support over the last few decades. We value the contribution of not only our long-term members, but all of our members for their continued support and involvement. I will now pass the meeting back over to our new president, Scott Lair. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Scott. Thank you. Congratulations to all of those businesses. We appreciate you very much and look forward to working with you in the future. Our board of directors and the ongoing success of the chamber depends upon the active participation, participation and engagement of its board and you, our members. A special thank you this year to Sarah Cook for her years of service since joining the board in 2016. We have, sorry, one second. We have a uh, 
Fuck in recognition and appreciation for your service of years, we'd like to present with you to you. You have been a steadfast advisor to the board and very passionate about policy and good governance, and you will certainly be missed. We greatly appreciate that you will continue on with us um, at the committee level, and maybe a phone call or two from me looking for advice. It takes an entire board of directors to successfully govern a body like the Chamber of Commerce, and we are grateful for the contributions of all our past and present directors to our, our organization. If you are a past director with the chamber and have not yet received your chamber lapel pin, please contact the chamber office and we'd be happy to provide you with a pin. Uh, thank you as well tonight to Ryan Dorton and Aaron Fleming, past directors of our board who are joining us this evening. And if anyone out there is curious about what it takes to become a board member, please reach out to any one of our executive team and we'd be happy to talk to you about it. And, uh, we're always looking for new people every year. At this time, I'd like to recognize Marcus Campbell for his term as president this past year and thank him for his service since 2017. Marcus, we have a, actually, well, just one second. The thing, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll try not to drop this one though. <laughs> the thing Marcus was looking forward to most in his term was shaking hands and kissing babies at the many social networking events the chamber normally would have. Unfortunately, that never happened. Closest he got was two board meetings stuck with us, so kind of feel bad for him. So I guess we'll have to keep him around for another year and busy as his past president for us. So you can make up for that time and those hands and babies. Marcus did a great job of keeping our board moving forward in the new reality, and keeping our meetings on time, productive and entertaining, be it from his truck, hotel room or office. On behalf, of, uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors, Marcus, we'd like to provide you with our comm commemorative President's Plaque, recognizing you for your years of service on the board. Thank you, sir. There you go. And look, with care, <laughs> put it in the last box. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus, for everything you did. You're a great, great leader. I'm going to move this one before I drop it. <clears throat> Um, I'd also like to recognize Tracy the Net. She joined the, the chamber board in 2016 and became president the year I started on the board. But sadly, she leaves us tonight as her term of past president comes to an end, despite having arguably one of the toughest, toughest if not the toughest uh, terms due to the new COVID reality. Um, she did a great job and managed to navigate us through the new COVID reality, all while ma maintaining her cheerfulness and smile on her face. Although sometimes I think the smile on her face was because her computer froze and that's all we saw on the screen. <laughs> but whatever it takes. On behalf of the board, thank you, Tracy, for all you did uh, for, for, with your time on the board. Thank you for showing me how to be a great leader in tough times. Marcus is joining the company of Tracy and the long legacy of great leaders. We are fortunate to follow in the footsteps of many outstanding individuals and leaders before us. And we would like to recognize our past presidents who are in attendance tonight and those who are unable to join us this evening for their service to the chamber. You can see the list of past presidents recognized in our annual report pages of our website. We appreciate each and every one of you for your time, dedication and commitment to this community. You have paved a very solid road for the future directors to travel and for that we are truly grateful. I would also like to thank, to thank you to all of the chamber staff. Lisa Kowalczuk, our fearless executive director. Joshua, Josh Schaefer, communications and project manager. Makes us all sound good. Selena Simmons, our member relations manager. I'm sure many of you have spoken to. Kian Lettinen, industry support, government relations. Samantha Tonin, marketing and special events manager. Behind the scenes here tonight. Terry Knowles, Finance and Operations Administrator, Rebecca Wheeler, Business Support Assistant, and Kristen Walsh, our outgoing Marketing and Special Events Manager, who has truly played a pivotal role during COVID with navigating, managing, and implementing our virtual events and creating a new process and system for us. Best of luck to you and your family in your new endeavors. Thank, thank you to each of you for your contributions and commitment to this organization. We greatly appreciate it. With that, I wish to adjourn the 2021 Chamber of Commerce Annual General Meeting. 
Before everyone signs off though, uh, I'd like to mention a few events. Um, we will be hosting a few events in the new year, um, one of which being the State of the City on Tuesday, February 22nd, uh, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30, and that will be in person at the Medicine Hat Lodge. So that will be wonderful to see everybody there and get to do some networking. Keep an eye on your inbox and event reminders uh, for attendance instructions. And of course, you can always check our website for any upcoming events. With that, we will conclude our annual general meeting and we wish everyone a wonderful holiday season, Merry Christmas and best wishes for 2022.